Good evening and a good afternoon to viewers from all walks of life. This is Denzimos and I welcome you to the channel of truth, enlightenment, freedom and the channel of breaking empath free. If it's your first time here and narcissism resonates with you, I encourage you to join us. Like the page, share with the friends, subscribe. If you have always been with me, you are welcome back and I thank you for your love and support. Today, this morning, I got up to a new... Uh, yesterday, yesterday we talked about... Um, the different roles played by different kids, different individuals in a narcissistic family, narcissistic, un narcissistic, narcissistic family unit. We talked about the golden child, who is also most likely an empath, but at some point in time, uh, they have been later on programmed to actually become the narcissist themselves. So we have, we have talked about the golden child who ended up sometime uh, later on in their life, in their adult life, becoming the narcissist themselves. We also talked about uh, the lost child, that lost child, we didn't go into the details. I'll make a video about that as well. But that is the child that actually is never heard about. The child who is like, does it even exist in the family? They are somewhere there in the background, but they're not usually talked about, but they're like uh, hidden in the background, even if they're still within the family. We also talked about the scapegoat. The scapegoat, or even, or even the black sheep, the child who is actually blamed for all the things that, that have gone wrong in the family. Most of the time they have been pointed fingers at. The truth teller. The, this, this is the child. This is also the child who is the truth teller. The child who sees everything. The child who actually speaks out on top of on top of whatever they see. They always come out and speak. And in the process, they have been blamed, and sometimes fingers have always been pointed at them for no apparent reason. We also talked about the enabling parent, who is actually uh, uh, the other side of the narcissist. So usually, usually the narcissist they have got on the sides uh, an enabling parent, the, the parent who like flows along with whatever they are doing agrees with whatever they are doing. They may not necessarily be narcissists, but they agree with whatever the narcissist is saying. So they are called the enabling parents, and we are also going to do a video about that at some point. This morning, I woke up to a new role, which is played by an individual who, they, who, who, is, who is termed as the paralyzed child. Now, this video caught my attention. I was watching a video. If I get the link, I will put the link, and uh, if I get the uh, uh, if I get the chance, I may put a link in the description below. But normally, I prefer not to share other videos because I don't, I don't own them. I don't have any copyright to them. But I've actually uh, come across a video of another victim of narcissistic abuse who happened to be married, um, in a, who happened to be in a partnership with, an, with a paralyzed child. And I got a lot of information from this individual, which also brought me back to my situation because I have personally seen a paralyzed child. Who, who, which child at the moment, I, I later on learned that actually that is the child in the family who is like on top of being a scapegoat, they are also actually physically abused. It's like they are, they are, their spirit is being broken from childhood. Uh, on top of verbal abuse, uh, they are also physically abused by their narcissistic parents. So most of the time you find those children being beaten up for, for, for no apparent reason. Then you find them at some later on during their teenage years, they are developing defense, defense mechanisms. They are, they are starting to engage themselves in, uh, it, it could be other, other small, small, uh, um, illegal activities so you, you could find them involving themselves in drugs sometimes they may involve themselves in uh, in theft and robberies sometimes you, you, you might involve they may you may find them involving themselves in other small small uh, illegal activities which actually are not serving them but at the end of the day it is how they live and how they have learned to live along the way because they start to use these things as defensive this defense mechanisms but guys i don't want you to get it twisted in this video those children on top of the scapegoat and on top of the other ones, the lost child and the even sometime in the beginning, in the early stages, the golden child, those children, they're also empaths. They're strongly empaths. I've seen myself a golden, uh, what do they call it? A, a paralyzed child who was initially an empath, but at some point in time down the road, they have developed other habits. I think for them, I could not understand it that time, even that it's making sense now, but I've come to realize that actually those were defense mechanisms they were using to cope with life because at the end of the day, they were usually abused even physically and verbally uh, by their narcissistic parents and they started developing other things uh, within their subconscious. At the end of the day, they started uh, ended up in different different activities, which activities even sometimes have brought them even sometimes deeper down the drain. And I've come up with a list. I've made a list this morning that are going to help you identify. This may be you, this may be your family member who is a, a paralyzed child. I want to give you just a little bit of more enlightenment. If you if you can identify with any of these nine things I'm going to talk about in this video. If that is one of it, or two of them, or three of them, I want you to mention it in the comment section below. Let it be known if you are the paralyzed child or if you are the person who knows a member of your family who has actually turned out to be a paralyzed child. 
one of the things you're going to find with the paralyzed child is um, they are going to struggle with uh, intimacy. They're going to have a lot of issues with intimacy. Now, basically, you have to understand that these children, first of all, we have to understand they're the empaths. But it's at the end of the day, they are... Um, their, their emotions have been they have been their emotions have been played with by the narcissistic parents so it's basically they're not very, they're not in touch with their emotions they may be in love with somebody they even want to show love and affection to somebody but at the end of the day they end up actually uh, having to struggle with this because they do not know how to be intimate with somebody yes they, you will see them sometimes even with in marriages or whatever it is but behind closed doors they're actually struggling to be intimate with those kind of individuals it does not it does not always have to be sexual intimacy or something but it may be that case whereby they don't know how to uh, engage in a partner, you know, engage engage with their partners and have a normal, uh, outstanding relationship with them. They will just be there for the sake, but at the end of the day, their emotions are not attached to them. And they do not have uh, that emotional, uh, intimate connection with their partners or whatever. Another sign, which is the second one, they are going to have a lot of unanswered issues. So you're going to find those paralyzed children. They are, they, are, they are moving through life, they are going through life with a lot of unanswered issues. So you're going to find them asking themselves a lot of questions. Why did my father do me like this? Why did my mother treat me like that? Why did my brothers turn against Why did all my brothers from my siblings turn against me? Why am I always the person who is, going the, who is doing the wrong things in the home? Why am I the always, uh, the, always the person who is punished? Even sometimes you may find those kids, some of those children, even sometimes they don't know, they don't know their original parents. Some, sometimes they could find that those children have, children have actually been adopted in the family, or even sometimes we find that one of their parents, uh, they, they, only, they only have one of their parents who is a biological parent, so the other parent may not be their biological parent. It could have been they met, the, they met their partners already with children for this matter. So you can find those children having a lot, a lot of unanswered issues, and at the end of the day, they don't have anybody to sit with and actually discuss these things, and they do not have anybody to answer those questions. On top of even trying, they may try to go to their narcissistic parents to ask some of these questions, but at the end of the day, they will never get the answers they need. The third one, um, you're going to find these children, like, most of their, uh, when they grow up into, into adults, you're going to find them um, usually ending up, they are, they are usually, most likely, on top of the golden child, like I mentioned, even sometimes the scapegoat, you're going to find them also ending up with narcissists most of the times because they have had they have had this uh, this pattern of narcissism implanted in them. Like like you know, they have they have grown, they have grown up being beaten. Even some, even sometimes some of them they have got scars on their body, so they are physically and emotionally scarred for life. It is like end of the day they are going to grow up, and at the end of the day they are going to find that actually they are only attracting narcissists. You know what I mean? Because first of all, initially they have been made paralyzed. They have been they have been emotionally and physically paralyzed by their narcissistic parents. So there is very, there, there's very less chances that they are going to end up with a healthy individual. So eventually you're going to find them actually ending up with narcissists and the abuse is going to actually restart in their partnerships, friendships, or even sometimes relationships with the individuals they are going to be dating later on at, an, uh, at a later stage. Uh, the fourth one I can talk about is that uh, you're going to find these children ad adopting very seriously dangerous habits. So you could find them later on they are getting involved in thefts. They are starting to be to to steal. They will they will be stealing even before. They will be involved in theft even within even even when even the time during when during the during the time they are still with their parents. But at the end of the day, this thing is going to like uh, mature with time and evolve with time, and they are going to become really really um, uh, really, really deeply involved in uh, theft. They may be involved in uh, be involved with drugs. They may actually sometimes be involved with uh, with gangs and everything. So you are going to find their life go going along that line, whereby they are going to involve themselves later on in very seriously dangerous habits. It could be so many habits, but I've just given you an example of thefts, or even sometimes robberies, or even gangs. Even sometimes you can find them getting involved in murders. You know what I mean? So their life is going to go along that drain because these individuals, let's not forget, they have physically been physically and emotionally been been broken down by their narcissistic parents and I again like I said most of these things are done subconsciously because like I said most of these parents they are not awakened to the fact that they are narcissists they're not awakened to the fact that actually most of these things that they're doing to their children they're actually toxic so they may get awakened later on that is if the black sheep uh, wakes up at some point they're going to start getting out the information and most of these parents they can get an awakening even then like I said there's nothing they can do about that they are narcissists they are narcissists and that is it end of the story uh, the next point I can talk about, um, uh, those children, they're usually loners. They're usually loners and isolated. On top of the black sheep and the, the, the lost child, those individuals also, they're going to be loners and really, really isolated. 
So you can find them sometimes they're in a home and they're somewhere in the corner, sitting by the corner by themselves, or even sometimes you can find them. It's very, very difficult for them to engage. You can find even sometimes there's family things going on, occasions going on, uh, there's a gathering going on, sometimes weddings going on, but you, you, you will spot them somewhere there, like, like the one seated at the end of the... Uh, some, somewhere in the corner just overlooking everything. So you're going to find them all their lives. They have got this lonely pattern because remember, this has been a coping mechanism during the abuse, during the narcissistic abusive, uh, abusive family, the, the, the toxic family they were involved with. It has been a, it has been a defense mechanism for them, a coping pattern. So it's like they, are, they have been used to being abused. They could have been beaten or even sometimes emotionally, physically beaten. So at the end of the day, they start to avoid their parents. You know what I mean? So when they see their parents, they isolate themselves and sometimes go and hide away, from, uh, hide away somewhere. They don't want their parents to see them because they believe if they get into contact with their parents, they are going to be emotionally, even sometimes physically abused. So it has been a defense mechanism or even a coping mechanism. That is what makes them very big time loners. And usually they will find themselves isolated. Even if they have relationships, even if they have girlfriends, they are married or whatever, you are still going to find them feeling very lonely in that relationship. They don't do, they do not have a say because like I've said, they're already married to nurses, they're already engaged with nurses. So they do not have a say in those partnerships. They are still feeling lonely emotionally. They are still lonely because there is that gap of them that's actually will never be fulfilled for as long as they live. Another point I can talk about is um, at some uh, at later point in time, those um, those parents' children they may develop a relationship. It could be with a golden child or it could be with the scapegoat. It, it it depends who it depends who will come in first. But at some point in time, there is a case whereby some of those parents' children they have connected back together, reconnected with the either the golden child or even sometimes the scapegoat. And like I've said, all these people, all these individuals, the golden child, the, uh, the scapegoat, the lost child and the paralyzed child, all these individuals, they are empaths. That is why those individuals, they have always been targeted from birth. So they are narcissistic parents because of their own uniqueness and own their different capabilities in the family. They have seen them to be different from the other kids so they have been tried to they have tried to break them like really really break them from the beginning you know what i mean but like i've said these different roles apply differently so these individuals um they could later later on reconnect because if it happens it may happen it may not happen but there are some chances it, it could happen that they may get a chance to reconnect but it is only going to happen if one of the individuals, one of the four individuals in those roles has awakened and this time I'm talking about the scapegoat, the scapegoat, the scapegoat, the black sheep awakens. They help them also to awaken to the truth of what has been going on in that family, even sometime that they really never knew it. But if they get a chance, they will reconnect with the scapegoat, the black sheep, and the black sheep is the one who's going to give them some enlightenment. And through that, it is how they're going to get healing. I've personally been trying to get hold of the, the, of the, of the paralyzed child, but it's a little bit difficult because, like I've said, most of them, they are very far away from everybody. They have uh, continued with their lives. Nobody hears from them. It's like they are, they are completely paralyzed and lost somewhere in the, in the wilderness. So it is almost impossible to have a contact with them. I've tried and I'm still trying to get in touch with them because now I can see everything in broad daylight. I can know what has been going on, but as well, it has been difficult. So I hope at some point it will happen. Like I said, it is always going to happen. They are going to somehow get... They are, they are somehow going to get a contact with their other lost uh, family members, distant family members, or even lost family members. It's going to happen eventually. Uh, another thing I can talk about is um, they have, on, to, on top of being uh, isolated, they're going to find um, a very big problem to have a contact with other family members. So those parents' children, because of the way they have been programmed, they, are, they have been systematically programmed, it is going to be very difficult for them to connect with other family members, you know what I mean? Because they are always going to feel like they are out of place, they cannot fit in, they are, it's like it, it is a problem for them to sit with other individuals, discuss common issues or whatever. Even sometimes it is going to be very difficult for them to get a call, even sometimes to get a visit from family members. So you are going to find those parents' children somewhere in the wilderness they are lost uh, for a long period of time they have completely gone offline and gone off schedule and they are doing different things and other family members they don't want to know because like i've said this whole thing has been systematically programmed within the family that those individuals they are evil they are bad they are they are, they are the thieves they are the robbers they are the murderers they are the the drug addicts they are the, so they have been programmed systematically and this thing has actually infected the whole family members for them to think that those individuals they do not deserve attention. They do not deserve to be to, to be to, to be brought close. Yes, they may say one or two things, but just to cover up the whole story. But deep within, deep within them, I'm talking about the family members. They do not want anything to do with them. They have all, already left them, abandoned them because they have been programmed by the narcissistic parents 
to believe that those individuals, they are not worth attention. So it is very difficult for them to have contact with the family. They could have less or even sometimes no contact. You can find sometime a year, two family members have called them up, one family member has visited them. So they are completely lost in the wilderness and they don't know what to do with themselves. So it is going to be a case whereby they are also they have very less or even no contact with other family members. Another issue with the um, parents child I can talk about is that um, they have problems with uh, expressing their emotions. So you can find a case whereby those individuals, uh, they could be sad, they could be feeling sad, they could want to talk to somebody, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, remember, they are dealing with nurses already at home. So it is going to be very difficult for them to express the way they feel to those narcissistic partners they have at home. It is also going to be very difficult for them to even express their emotions to even family members, that is if they are around, or even sometimes to their friends. So they will always have an opposite uh, uh, an opposite way of expressing their emotions. So you may find them that uh, instead of being happy, you could find them that actually they, are, they don't know how to, because they have completely lost their identity. They have, complete, they, are, they have completely lost their identity and they have completely lost touch of their emotions. So you can find them in situations whereby instead of feeling happy, they're going to be feeling sad about things. The, instead of expressing joy, there's a birthday going on, whatever, you're going to find them actually moody, somewhere in the corner, feeling very moody, or whatever. They don't they don't even know what is going on in, in that occasion, whatever occasion is going to be. Or even sometimes you're going to find them, instead of crying or something like that, they're going to actually even smile. Instead of crying, they will smile, and it's, instead of smiling or even laughing or even expressing joy, they could even bust out and cry. So it is going to be a, a, a very different wave of emotions going on within them. It is, going, it's, it is going to be like the other, the other individuals in the family, or even sometimes in their circle. It's going to be completely different. So it's going to be a problem to experience uh, their emotions. And finally, which is even the most bizarre, you're going to find it, uh, they're going to find a situation whereby they will freeze in time. You know what I mean? Because these individuals, like I've said, they have completely psychologically been destroyed, very deeply emotionally abused and physically abused by their narcissistic parents. So you're going to find a case whereby they, they reach a point whereby they start to freeze in time. So when they are talking to you, it's like you may be having a conversation with them if you're their partner or even a family member or whatever. You could, you could be having a conversation and they'll just be there looking at you. you know, they'll just be watching you, talking, talking. And it's going to be like for them, it's like uh, they're watching a movie or something like that. They could, you could even feel as if they're watching, some, uh, they're watching television or even sometimes they're watching something on the screen. So they'll just be freezing. They, they will not even take in most of the things you're telling them because they don't even know what you're saying in the first place. So you're going to find those parents children uh, in a case whereby they are freezing in time they are freezing in time by freezing in time what I've been like they, they fall into a trust they don't know what is going on they don't know what you're saying they are watching you speaking or whatever it is but they don't know what they cannot make the whole sense of what you're saying that is why you see most of the cases you've talked to these paralyzed children and at the end of the day after the conversation they will say yes they have understood but tomorrow they're going to do something different they'll say yes okay I understand what you tell me I agree with you each and everything whatever it is but a couple of uh, weeks down the road, you're going to actually see them doing the opposite of what you've told them. So this is because those children, they have been deeply traumatized by their parents, by their narcissistic parents, and their, their, their emotions and their cycle, they have been psychologically uh, corrupted and broken down like to the ground, like flat, flat, flat face on the ground, and they can never get themselves back together. Now, let's not get something twisted. First of all, you have to understand, these kids, they are empaths. They will always be empaths. And those kids, there's, there's nothing that can, that can actually destroy their empathy. Even sometimes you may find, how far, like, for me, like for me in my case, I, I knew a paralyzed child who used to fight for me when I was a kid. I, I, because sometimes some they, 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 they are very empathetic uh, when it comes to the other siblings. So you find them sometimes they are coming in helping other siblings, sometimes even defending their siblings, or even some, most, of the, most of those things like that. But at the end of the day, you can find themselves going down the drain and they do not know anymore who they are. They don't know what is going on with them. But at the end of the day, I can guarantee you, if these individuals get help, the only thing they need is to get in touch with a family member or a person who knows what is going on. So if you're a person on this video and you know you, there's a paralyzed child in your family who has been physically and emotionally destroyed by the narcissistic parent and beaten up or something like that, something like that you need to reach out to them the only thing you need to you need to do reach out to them you can share this video with them if it's possible sit down with them and explain to them the history of this whole thing what they are going through so that they can come to the conclusion and the healing they can now start to get healing because like i said it is through information it is through talking it is through this kind of relationship the, the information we put out there it reaches the people who need it and eventually when you get the truth of what is going on you can start to seek for healing you can maybe go sometimes seek therapy, counseling, or whatever, but it all starts to starts with understanding what you've been going through and coming to the realization of who you really are. Because if you have lost your identity, you have got, first of all, to get back your identity. And these kids being empaths, they have got a chance and the capability, just like the scapegoat and the lost child, 
they have got the capability to heal but first of all they need to get realization of who they are and what has been going on with them in their families psychologically emotionally or even sometimes physically that being said guys i've come to the end i've come to the end of this video i hope it resonates if it does please let it be known in the comment section below what you think about this if you're a paralyzed child if you know somebody who has been a paralyzed child in, the, in your family or even a friend let them be known share this video with them don't be selfish share this video with them let them know what has been going on so that they can start to get healing at the end of the day that being said guys much love and blessings it's been a, a really lovely day to have you guys on board bless you and i'll catch you soon there's more signing out